In this video, I'll answer your questions about After Effects and my tools. If you have a question, just email me at support at sonnevandijk.tv so I can answer it with a video like this. I just got a question in from someone that asked me if it's possible to stylize specific sections of an Ouroboros stroke. This is possible depending on your situation. So in this video, I'm gonna just explain to you what the limitations are and how you could potentially work around them. Ouroboros is one layer and whenever we take a line like this and we apply Ouroboros to it, you know, as soon as we apply a texture to this or a stylized effect like layer styles here, let's add a bevel and emboss. If we crank this up here, you could see that because it's one layer, the entire line is being treated one way. Now this might work for you where that's the effect that you're after, but if you wanna individually control these, say that you're having you know, you put a different cap on these and you put a trim on here and you just trim some of these lines. I mean, you could still see that this works, but as soon as they start to overlap, that's where you get the problems because then it starts to interpret between. And what if you wanted to add a different texture to this part of the stroke and another texture to this part? Now there is one workaround and it might be a little complex, but it all depends on your situation. So let me just show you what's possible. Now, in order to texture each stroke individually, what we need to do is we need to have each stroke on its own layer. And a way that we can achieve that is by looking at the structure of the Ouroboros stroke. When I open up the contents, here I can see that Ouroboros stroke. And if I open this up, you can see that I find one, two, three groups in here. And each of those groups are one of the strokes. You can see here when I turn them on and off that they react to it. So, in order to get these strokes on one layer, I almost need to create three duplicates in this case of this Ouroboros stroke here. So what I can do is I can create a, an exact clone of this by going to edit and then copy with property links and then command V to paste it. It puts it all the way here in the center of the composition. So we need to make sure that we parent it to the original and then it snaps to the correct position over there. So I've created one copy and this is Ouroboros one and I'm gonna create two more copies. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just focus on these layers, open up all their contents here. And then because this is number three, I'm gonna turn two and one off. Because this is number two, I'm gonna turn three and one off. Because this is number one, I'm gonna turn three and two off. So now I have one layer for each stroke and I'm also gonna turn the hero off. So after that, I have three layers here and each of these layers is its own individual section of the stroke. And then when I go to the original layer and adjust it, it still works because these three layers are layers with property links. Okay, so now that we have these individual layers, we can start to apply individual stylized effects to this. So now you can see that when these two overlap, let's go to the original to control it, it's not merging this anymore, you see? It's, it's keeping its it's considering each of these strokes their own. So when I turn these off and I go back to the original, this is what was happening with the original, right? So as soon as these merge, you can see that this effect considers this one layer. So when we have this, now we can effectively texture each stroke individually. Let's actually make the stroke width bigger here. So make sure that when you wanna control these duplicates, you don't go to the duplicates, but you go to the original here and you turn that off so that these are just stand-ins. And that's also how Ouroboros works. This is the original line. If I move the position of the original line here, everything else moves. And that's because Ouroboros is kind of just like an instance of the original, but with multiple strokes on it. And then here we've created another layer on top of that, where these are additional strokes that show different things. And what's cool too is that now we can actually change the order of the strokes. So if I move number three below here, you can see now that the first stroke in the middle is always gonna be on top. Okay, let's texture this middle stroke here. And for that, I'm gonna use Radionamic Texture. I'm just gonna grab the default assets that come with this. So I'm just gonna drag that into After Effects and then go to Radionamic Texture, refresh the script, and there are all my default textures. Now, Radionamic Texture also has a clone button here, and it works a little bit differently from the copy with property links. In my opinion, it's a more proper way to clone objects because the issue is that with the copy with property links, sometimes you know they show up over here in the top left while they should be connected to the original object to become a clone. But that's a whole different uh, subject. So in order to texture this, 
Well, let's texture the blue one here. And in this case, I'm going to use the set mat effect to texture. So not the alpha mat, not a track mat, because alpha and track mat require me to have another duplicate of this layer, which is going to make things really complex. So in this case, I just want to use the set mat because that doesn't require me to have an extra duplicate layer of this layer that's already duplicated so many times. So let's uh, just click on this layer, set, make sure it's the set mat, and then I'm going to choose the speckles texture here. Now let's see where that shows up. It actually shows up here in the top left. So I'm just going to move that over in place, scale it up quite a bit, and then zoom in. And now you can see that it has a texture applied to it that's animating. It really depends on what kind of texture you want to apply to this because if this line ends up moving, it's not like that texture is going to stick to it. It's just going to overlay on top of this object here because there's no real way to track the, the start and end point of this and make the texture move with it. I mean, you could, but that's a whole nother project right there. You would have to convert the path points here to nulls and then you know the position. I'll give you a hint. You can do that by going to window and then create nulls from paths. So that's how you would be able to do that. So here you can see we were able to effectively stylize our bore stroke, but it takes a couple, you know, this works for three strokes, but if you were in a situation where you have like 30 strokes, you can imagine that that's going to be a quite a different project. You're going to have a lot of layers, which is fine. If you have a fast computer, you can easily do that. And the way this works, by the way, is, uh, you know, dynamic texture, if you have it, great. If you don't, fine, you can also use just a normal set mat effect. You just take the set mat and then here, take mat from layer, you just select the second layer and then it should work. One thing you got to make sure of is that your texture image needs to be in a composition and it needs to be set to continuously rasterize because otherwise this is going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, make sure that that texture lives inside a composition here and it's set to continuously rasterize. So you can see it's not possible, but it is possible. It really depends on your situation and your creativity as far as what you want to do with Ouroboros. Comment on the video if you have further questions. You can find more answers on my YouTube channel and also on the resources page of each After Effects tool I created. If you create an account there, you can find lots of other resources and download project files as well. And if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, you can also find education courses and free tutorials right there. Keep learning and take care.